getting across town might one day be all about going up. It's a long way up, a lot of escalators. Climbing to the city's highest point and searching out the open air. Check wow. it out. Look at this. <laughs> wow, we are above it all. Yeah. Cars turning around the corner, including Hong Kong's iconic red taxis. And if you can imagine if we have all these traffic congestion on the road being split out to multiple level, we would no longer have the congestion. Now, the day when we no longer have to be down there, stuck in a taxi with smoggy traffic and instead fly above it all, may no longer be the stuff of science fiction. In fact, aerospace engineers from Munich, Germany say the sky's the limit when it comes to accelerating access to a carbon-free commute. Well, flying was always one of my biggest dreams. I was fascinated by moving in the third dimension, by the freedom that you can associate with flying. Daniel Weigand has been envisioning what the future of flight might look like since his days at university, watching videos of military aircraft taking off and landing vertically. I thought to myself, if we could make those machines electric and a bit smaller and produce in more scale, it would be a perfect means of transportation because it's fast, it's sustainable, it's very low noise and you don't need a high-speed infrastructure on the ground. Convinced the math worked, Daniel and three other students from the Technical University of Munich founded Lilium, an aerospace company based on the belief that electric airplanes could not only fly, but also be a viable mobility option. The basic physical feasibility was kind of our north star for all those years. And then, of course, we started actually flight testing the airplanes and, and we had the confirmation in flight. Billed as the first electric vertical and takeoff landing jet, Lilium's in its fifth generation of test flight models. There's basically two elements that make the Lilium jet unique. So wings, unlike a helicopter design, for example, are much more efficient in, in forward flight. It needs less energy. And the second piece is that we are using electric jet engines or so-called electric ducted fans to propel the aircraft. They work in the same principle like a classic uh, gas turbine engine, but instead of having a gas turbine in the center turning that fan, we have an electric motor that turns the fan. And then we have embedded those engines into the wings, and that makes the aircraft lighter and more efficient because the surface of the engines here is now generating lift like a wing in the forward flight. The rear of the aircraft has no tail, because we are fully stabilizing the aircraft with software. Now all these features are there to enhance the range of the aircraft because we have very little energy in the battery cells. So this is where we make the heart of our aircraft. This is the prototyping lab for the battery packs. The biggest hurdle to converting to electric flight is energy storage. So this one was the first one which flew in 2019 and they did a very nice job on the aircraft but we wanted to have less cells and we also wanted to have less weight. And then if we go over here, uh, this is the uh, latest design. And here you can see the cell that then actually goes um, into the certification aircraft. Um, it's a classic pouch cell design, similar to what you would find uh, in automotive applications in, in size and in production. Sometimes people make estimates of electric aircraft capability based on old batteries. But if you fast forward maybe 15 years and you extrapolate where the battery technology will be by then, it quickly becomes visible that we can do 30 or 50 percent of all passenger miles flown in battery electric airplanes maybe by 2050. Pioneering a new way to fly requires constantly figuring out what could fail. Here actually we have a fan, one of our older designs that we tested for bird strike. And as you can see, it survived. We have a bit of minimal damage, but it survives and can still produce the thrust that we want. Things look like everything is going to come together uh, in a 3D model, but putting them together and making sure that it can be repeatably done uh, is, is the, the tricky part, and that's what we're trying to solve. The futuristic design of what will be a seven-seater aircraft is not by accident. The favorite thing about is actually the exterior silhouette. I always have in mind this very seamless and very 
let's say, flowing shape of this year. It's actually the first thing that really captures and kind of a project you in the future. Rooftop landing. Okay, you have to point out which roof again. While the plane awaits final certification from both US and European regulators, test pilots are prepping for Lilium's first manned flight. You're accelerating. There we go. It's a gentle climb. 75, okay. It's something new. We're at the beginning still of, a, of what's going to be a long journey. Uh, it's a new concept, it's a new style of flying. Why wouldn't you want to get involved in it? On the, on the surface of the wing, right? As the team of over 800 begins production on an electric plane that can transport passengers, the final piece of the puzzle is making sure it fits into a sustainable ecosystem. What we mainly believe in is in using electric flight to do intercity connections. So when you do regional flight, you very quickly get into hours of time saving, sometimes three, four, five hours compared uh, to a car trip on the ground. And that's really the problem we want to solve. What I have learned from our engineers and, and people in this sector here is that engineers always find a solution. It's incredible, no matter how big the problem is, they will solve it as long as you don't violate basic physical principles. And I think that gives us and gives me amazing hope for solving the climate change problem.